is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 2nd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Horrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of green, at least with regard to the U.S. indices out there, all trading the upside. Uh, two sectors inside the S&P 500 are trading lower, the XLV, the healthcare sector, and the building sector, which is down 61 cents. Got the Dow up 210, S&P 25, NASDAQ 100, 125, 20 points for the Russell, 62 points for the semis, 355 points for the uh, trannies out there. You've got gold trading up four bucks, five bucks. Silver's up 19 cents. Slice recruit is off 47 pennies. Natural gas up eight cents. The 30-year treasury print out 114.16. Our leaders in the clubhouse today, micro strategy up 75 bucks. Monolithic power systems, 48 bucks. Valmont Industries, 37. Carvana is up 20, uh, 33 bucks. Mercado Libre is up 22. To the downside, Huntington Ingalls Industry up 11%. 31 buck Roonies, 23 bucks for Parker Hannifin, 4% there. Lynn PLC, 24 bucks or 5%. Paycom Software, about 19 bucks, nearly a 10% move there. DoorDash down about 16. That's about a 13% move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Where are we going to start? Folks, I don't do this too often, but I do have the pattern. I do have the time frame that's been identifying the turns in the market so far. So that's where we're going to go start. When I say I don't do this too often, I do that all the time. What I don't do is switch over to a five-minute time frame chart. So for those of you that are intraday traders, my suggestion is pull up the five-minute chart because that is basically the way that the wave patterns are coming in. If you were a, if you were surfing in the ocean, you're always looking for those waves. You're looking for those patterns that are coming in here. As we look at the five-minute time frame charts for the ES, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000, well, we'll see that this morning, as uh, the markets were making a low at 10.15 and at 10.20 out there, it was TD nine count bottoms across the board. And then what did we see take place? We saw rallies inside the uh, Dow went right up to resistance. That was the top of its profile, 38.241. That profile now has been, uh, the price has just closed above it at 11.10. That says we're getting back up to 38. Uh, 321 inside the Dow. If price closes above that, we're headed higher. We can see an A to B equals CD pattern that has formed now uh, inside of the Dow. We have that same pattern inside of the ES mini. I won't draw that in, but those of you that are interdrade traders, you're definitely doing that because you're looking for that next potential topping signal out there. In the case of the ES mini, same pattern. TD9 count bottom, price runs right up into resistance. That's that profile level that gives you a competitive advantage out there over others. That's up in the 50, 67 area. And with 
without doing the A to B equals CD pattern on the upside, I would say 50, 88, 75 is his price target. If price goes below above that, we're likely headed higher. But it will be in an A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. And that would say if we, on a five-minute basis, if you get a bearish reversal candle, look for the market to pull back to a level of support. In the case of the NQ, same pattern that's going on. So right now we've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. Its next price target, at least, or its next sell zone, is going to be up in the 17602 area. And inside the Russell 2000, it'll be up at the 2016 to 2018 50 level out there. So we're going to do something that's pretty unusual. We're going to go from the ultra short term. And we're going to go to kind of the long-term charts out there. And that's really because of the first question that came in this morning, and that's courtesy of John inside the Tiger's Den, Mr. Z. And basically, Mr. Z was asking, do I see a scenario? I believe I'm just paraphrasing here. I, I, I can't go back and uh, find that question that easily. Well, wait, here it is. Um, so he's asking the question about the April 22nd bottom. Um, as being a key level that if price closes below that, we're just simply going to head south out there. So let me try to answer that question the best way that I can. The first question, the first thing we'll do while we're on these charts here is let me move over and I'm going to take a look at the Dow charts out there. John was talking about the S&P 500 NASDAQ, but we're going to now flip between probably the S&P and the Dow out here because of what I want to do for each of us. And that is to kind of give you a feel. I mentioned this yesterday. And we're going to take a look at right now, starting with the Dow. And we're taking a look at the Dow daily chart out here, daily, weekly, and monthly. Now, what's really important is really the monthly out here. Why is that really important? Well, because what we can see is in, during the month of April out there, what the Dow did is it formed, it confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. We have that same pattern on the weekly, and we have the same pattern on the daily out there. I'm going to show you some charts in a moment to let you know why that is important. So let me restate that again. You look at the S&P 500. We have a Rhodes Mentum indicator top on the monthly. We have one on the weekly. We have one on the daily. Now, in the case of the monthly time frame chart, price needs to close below that oscillator and change line in order for there to be any downside action out there. For the, so for the Dow right now, that number is about 37,865. If price were to close below that, then the price targets to the downside, John, would be 37,122. We're looking at the cash indice out there. That's its weekly TD9 count breakout level. And below that, we'd be looking at 37. I'm sorry. So 37,451 is a breakout level for the daily time frame. 37,122 is a breakout level for the weekly time frame. Those would be the areas of support if price breaks through the lows. Now, the lows that I'm referring to out here are really from the week of April the 19th out there. Uh, maybe that was uh, the low that you pointed out. I, I don't recall, John, but that's the low that I would be taking a look at. On the uh, daily time frame, it's actually the low from... Um, April 17th, if we close below that. Now, I have no idea whether price will be able to break through those areas, but those are key levels of support. Now, why is Stevie focused on those three Rhodesman Dominicator tops out there? Okay, that's a great question. To answer that question, what we're going to do is you got to give me just a moment here to get this set up slideshow from the current slide. And where did that go? Hey, that worked. Son of a gun. Gosh, you got to love that. So here, what we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a little tour back through history. This is 1929. Or these are the top. This is the Dow charts in 1929. What you're going to notice here, take a look at the monthly chart. Roach Mintum Indicator Top. Take a look at the weekly chart. Roach Mintum Indicator Top. Take a look at the daily time frame. Roach Mintum Indicator Top. We come back to this break. We're not going to stop there. Let's go see what happened before the 87 crash. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So one of the reasons I was focused on the Dow is because I can go back historically, you know, into the 1800s to take a look at what's going on here. And, uh, of course, we started with the 1929 top. Uh, what John was really asking about was, do we see any kind of scenario where we could see some type of waterfall um, uh, move to the downside? And really, the charts here from 87, in essence, show, I believe, what John was trying to communicate to me. You can just see that waterfall to the downside. Now, at the uh, 87 a crash out there. You had a daily roads mintum indicator top, a weekly and a monthly time frame. But we won't stop there. We'll fast forward to the year 2000. What do we have going on in 2000? We had those same kind of topping patterns. Now, what I want to state here is just because all three have those topping patterns does not mean that we will enter into a bear market. What it does mean is we have the conditions that are present that, in fact, could take us down there. That's different. So and, and what, what I have found in studying bear markets out there where we've got more than 20 percent moves is we will have tops in the daily, weekly and monthly. John had posed this question in essence to me. He may remember probably about a month ago. It might have been in a private ping or what have you. I, I don't believe I answered that question directly. I kind of forgot about that, by the way, but I am reminded about that. But my answer then would have been no. And maybe I did come back and answer maybe specifically, John, no. And the reason was because it didn't have, we did not have on a weekly, on a monthly basis, we did not have yet a completed Rosemont indicator top. That is a different answer now on May 2nd, having now had April complete and knowing the pattern that's out there. What about at the 2007 top? Same patterns that are out here. Again, how about during the the, um, COVID crash. Turns out in the COVID crash, we only had a Rhodes momentum indicator top on the weekly basis for the Dow. That must be the S&P 500 knocking at Stevie's door. Well, if we go back and we take a look at the patterns that were present in the S&P 500, guess what? Daily, weekly, monthly, 
Roads momentum indicator tops were out there. So we don't just look at just the Dow. And in fact, so now let's just get off of this screen here and let's go over to the other screen that I was using, where in that screen I had the Dow up there. And John was asking about the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Well, let's go see what's going on underneath the covers of the S&P 500 for those three timeframes out there. And what we're going to see, you already know what we're going to see, don't you? What we're going to see out here is a Roadsman indicator top for the daily, for the weekly, and now for the monthly time frame. So the answer to your question, John, I would obviously have to be completely disingenuous to say, no, there's no chance at all. I can't be disingenuous. I'm not going to be disingenuous. We're going to get back and take a look at that question. I've identified for you those first levels of support. But if you're asking me, no, uh, you know what? On the weekly time frame chart, we do not have a roads momentum indicator top out here, but we do have a sell the D point pattern. So we do have those tops. Now, in the case of the S&P 500, price must close below that green oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 49.24. So for its pattern, what it's really suggesting is that price should get back. Typically, when we get topping patterns, price will pull back to identify level or two levels of support, not to identify, but two levels of support. We identify those levels of support here. They're either TD9 count breakout levels, those are the red horizontal lines you see on our screen, or it could be the green or red oscillator and change line. And right now, on the monthly basis, 49.24 or thereabouts is its price target to the downside. All right, let's not stop there. Let's. What else do we need to know? Let's take a look at the seasonal factors that we're dealing with here. And here are the seasonal factors. Now, let me just do this. I need to start over from scratch. I was just kind of play, tinkering around here. We don't need to tinker. This is the Dow, by the way. So I've got the Dow up on our screen. Why? Because we have 127 years worth of data. The red vertical line shows us where we're at right now. Where we're at right now, we are in a little bit of a favorable seasonal cycle. And if we take a look at when this is supposed to top, it is next Tuesday. Next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this actually comes up with the date of May the 8th out here as where we should see the sell in May cycle kick in. Now, that's going to be the underlying current. It doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen, but that is the underlying current when we just simply take a look at 127 years worth of data. And what we can see here is you typically get that top and you move down into a low back into the middle of June or the end of June time frame out there. Now, this is not the only time frame cycle that we're dealing with out here. For example, we are in an election year cycle. If we take a look at the election year cycle, which, by the way, I do not believe that the Dow is following along with this analog here. And the reason is because typically during the seasonal cycle of a presidential seasonal cycle, what we see out here is a high right in that first week of January. That's normal no matter what. And then we move lower into that uh, June time frame out there. Well, we really we've been rallying up into the April time frame. Uh, here you can see there is a uh, top that usually comes in in the early part of April. Um, and then the market moves lower. So, But here, at least, we can see that with regard to the current, the so-called uh, um, undercurrent of the markets, we're still dealing with this, but that's not necessarily. We are in a even year out there. So if we take a look at what the even year cycles are like, the even year cycle suggests that we move into a rally into May 8th. And then what do we do? We move lower into that June time frame out there. Uh, if we take a look at bullish market trend, years where we have a bullish market trend, and we most certainly have that as we speak right now, then here's what we're looking at. And here on those years, we typically get a top right around, again, May the 8th out there. So there's the potential. So at least what you do know, at least with regard to the Dow, using these different time frames, you know when that sell in May cycle comes in. Whether it takes hold or not, that we don't know just yet. And what we're going to have to really do is we're going to have to just simply follow along with the patterns that are present. Understand where support and resistance is at and go from there and see what patterns. So speaking of the patterns, now we go take a look at the daily time frame charts out here. The daily time frame charts of the equity futures contract. That's where we're going to start. Why? Because three of the four have bottom patterns. So in order to get that so-called cascade or waterfall to the downside, price must close below those lows out there. What are those lows? Well, in the case of the ES Mini, it's going to be the low from April the 19th. That low out there, I should have known it off the top of my head, is at uh, 50 zeros. Uh, is, I'm sorry. The low is 49.6350. If price closed below 49.6350, then we probably have a larger A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. In the case of the NQ, I don't have a bottom pattern. All I've got is a consolidation with inside its profile. So we may not get that signal. 
uh, from the uh, NQ out there, but we would get it from the Dow. The Dow has a TD Nike out bottom. That thing has been tested several times, once, twice, three, four. Uh, it was tested again yesterday and held. That TD Nike out bottom is priced out at uh, 37,911. If we get it close below that, it's not curtains. It just says we head down to the next support level. That's at 37,651. Uh, what you'd really want to see, so a close below that, that could start that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. But the truth is it needs to close below the swing low, and that swing low is at 37,463. So let's make 37,463 that key number. In the case of Russell 2000, it has to close below its TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom is down at 1915.80 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily time frames for the equity future contracts, understanding where we're at with regard to signals that we have for daily, weekly, monthly time frames out there. As we move into this sell in May cycle, it absolutely suggests caution. I'm not saying to, you know, dump the portfolio or anything along those lines. We don't have that signal as we speak right now. All right. Hopefully, hopefully that added that answered your question, Mr. Z hopefully provided some great background information on the bigger patterns out there for everybody else, as well as Mr. Z. And we come back to this break, let's start taking a look at some requests. We only have three of them. Arm, Apple, and ENVX. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. 
They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's get to the requests out there. We've got a number of them come in, and I want to be able to get to each of them. The first one is from Duncan Steve inside the Tigers. I want to be take a look at Arm Holdings out here. So we take a look at Arm Holdings. What do we have on the daily time frame? <clears throat> so I suppose we have an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside out there. It's not really an ideal pattern out there so i'm just going to go with right now what we have duncan is price consolidating with inside its bullish structure daily profile if you were to see a close below 9008 more likely if you were to see a close below 8561 price would make its way back to 7160 we can see that the oscillator and change line here has been really acting as resistance all the way back to uh, march 4th so for quite some time if you were to see a close above that that at this stage here, and that being 101.34, you'd see it move to 112.45. That would be a battle, then 130.84. But if you close above it, that would be a, a kind of a bullish thing. It would certainly be a change in the trend that we've taken a look at. On a weekly time frame out here, um, price is below support as well. That suggests lower prices. We don't have enough data on the monthly time frame to really assist us with anything. I'd watch the 30-minute out here. You're seeing a little bit of a rally. That rally was forecast by that Rhodesman indicator bottom pattern out here, but resistance is up at 101.96 out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to arm holdings out there. Wish I could provide you with better information. That's all that I have, though. So uh, thanks so much for the request, uh, Duncan. Let's go to our next one. And it's, we've got a saint inside the Tiger's Den. And that's the question is, what's Apple going to do? No, Apple's out with earnings after the bell. So we take a look at Apple out here. What do we see? If we take a look at the daily time frame, we've got a Rosemont indicator signal that's been triggered. But we don't have any kind of a bullish reversal candle. Doesn't matter. We got a profile change of trend, or so we thought we did on April 29th. Turns out that was a false signal because price closed right back and got back inside that profile. So we don't have a change in trend signal for Apple. Right now, price is trading above the top of its daily profile. If it does close above that today at 171.61, it might be bullish, but we've already been above the top of that profile before, Saint, so I'm uncertain. If we look at the weekly time frame, what do we have here? Well, we've got an A to B equals CD pattern. That is requiring a bullish reversal candle. That has not presented itself. And where did the rally run into resistance? That's right, that oscillator and change line. That is red. That is a bearish signal. But yet we know that support is holding. 170.86. If you look at the monthly time frame, monthly time frame is trading underneath the center of its bearish structured monthly profile. That would suggest that Apple would want to make a trip down to the 147.01 or 123.13 level. So what I don't have here in the case of Apple for its daily or any time frame is really any good news, so to speak, or some type of tell to suggest that Apple wants to trade to the upside. But uh, we are trading with inside profiles for daily, weekly, and monthly. So all that I can suggest out there, Saint, is watch those different profile levels, those being 168.24, 170.86, and finally, it would be 147.01. Bob in Spokane wanted to take a look at ticker, ticker symbol ENVX. So let's get that up on our screen out here. And ENVX, what a gap to the upside. So that's a beautiful thing today. What was that confirming? Well, we've already got a TD9 count bottom. You have a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. And now what price should do for ENVX, that is NOVX Corp, is make its move up to its breakdown level. And where this broke down was at $9.82. That's its daily TD9 count breakdown level. Now, on the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame looks like a TD9 count pattern could form. Well, if it's going to form, you got to see a complete retracement of these gains out there. Why? Because in order for a TD9 count pattern to form, Price must close the week below, and this would be by tomorrow, 755. We're at 952. So I don't think the weekly chart is going to give us any kind of a bottom pattern. What it is going to tell us out, out here, Bob, is that it's going to have a battle, and that battle is going to be at 952. Both the center 
and bottom of its profile right there. So 952 is lined up with a bunch of sellers. If price can get through that, then you're looking at a move to the 1127 area. Let's go over to the monthly time frame and see what we have out here. What does this have in store for us? Not a lot. Not a lot, quite frankly. We are trading below profile there. We just don't have a ton of information on that monthly time frame chart to really generate much. It does show the potential for roads momentum indicator bottom. We're so new into the month, we can't really go there. So with regard to ENVX, um, looks to me like it just simply wants to continue to trade higher with that 982, 952 level being its upside price target. So, Bob, I hope that helped you out, and thanks so much for the request. The next request coming in from Ron R., and Ron would like to take a look at high host silver. So let's pull up the silver charts. His specific question is, so I can find it, is what is the downside target for silver? Now, what I can do, what I could do, is draw in the A to B equals CD pattern. But I won't do that on these sets of charts here. And what I'm specifically looking at when I say the A to B equals CD pattern, I'm looking at the daily time frame chart. And the daily time frame chart already has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside because we would use that bullish hammer candle from April 23rd. That's the B point. Now, the one-to-one -one price target would get us down to 2482 and price broke out at 24.76. So if you're asking me, where's the downside target? That's the downside target as long as price can close below a brand new profile, Ron, that is forming today. And that new profile has support at 26.786. It has resistance at 27.848. So that A to B equals CD pattern will continue on its merry way towards that 2482 level as long as price closes below the bottom of its daily profile, 2678. If we look at other time frames out here, see what we can see. Let's take a look at the longer term time frame. Five hour time frame right now is trying to form a roads momentum indicator bottom. This candle specifically is going to close at 2 p.m. What you'd love to see here, if silver's going to rally, is a close above 27.06 by 2 p.m. If you get that, you're likely to see a move up to 27.61. Wait a minute, Steve. Well, you were just talking about the daily A to B equals CD downside pattern. That's correct. Now we're looking at the intraday charts to see what's going on. If we look at a 60-minute time frame chart out here, we have price running to resist at 27.02. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. 27.15 on the two-hour time frame chart. It's TD9 count breakdown level. 27.07 on the 240-minute chart, the top of its profile. So what we've identified out here is this 27.0 and change level is is really key areas of resistance. So let's call it 2708. If price can close above 2708, you're likely to see that rally extend itself. That rally might extend itself to 2731. That's the center of that new profile. Or 2784, that's the top of the profile. But what you want to watch is does price close below the bottom of that profile? If it does, it tells us about that continuation of that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So, Ron, I hope that gave you the price targets to be looking for and that that helps you out. We come back to this breakout here. We're going to take a look at Alibaba, Oracle, Procter & Gamble, Palantir, Restoration Hardware, and Corvo, QRBO. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Alton is asking, should we buy, sell, or hold Alibaba? And you see that nice gap to the upside today? One might say, definitely hold this sucker they might not use that last piece of that sentence out there but they would definitely say certainly this is a hold maybe it's even a buy maybe it's breaking out however you and i know differently why do we know differently what was yesterday bar number eight what is today bar number nine of a td9 count this says on a daily time frame alibaba could top between today and tomorrow start moving lower on monday out there now what Alibaba is also doing is testing its second TD9 count breakdown level at 79.25. So as it's coming into an area where it had broken down before, we're going to get a TD9 count top. When was the last time that we had a TD9 count top out here in Alibaba that meant something? Well, we can just simply go back to the time that it gapped up back on February 27th. And then what did we see? We saw a pull back down to its breakout level of support at 72.18. How about the time before that? Well, there was a TD9 count pattern that formed on the bar following bar number nine. That was on December 28th out there. So what we can say is the last two TD9 count tops have made something. Will the third time be the charm? Now, you're asking, should you buy? Should you sell? Should you hold or what have you? What I can share with you is price should pull back to test support. That first level of support is the top of the daily profile that formed yesterday or two days ago, 76.93. If price got below that, it would get down to 74.42. Maybe you want to ride that out. I don't know where you're long. I don't know what your position is. There's nothing wrong with the um, weekly time frame. Uh, price is trading above resistance there right now. And that's at 75.63. You do have resistance at 82.12 on the monthly time frame for Alibaba. So I would just take a look at it like this. Uh, you should expect or anticipate that Alibaba will begin to pull back by Monday out there just simply based on that pattern behavior. Now, you're going to get a TD9 count top. That is for certain. If price begins trading above that, that pattern gets negated, and that would then say, okay, we're headed up towards 80, 82.12, and then maybe above that, the 87.83 level. But right now, based upon its prior patterns out there, I would expect or anticipate some type of pullback or retracement. So I hope that helps you out. We're going to go take an Oracle uh, for Jane. And with regard to Oracle, what do we have out here? In the case of Oracle, you right now are trading with inside his profile support at 114.74, resistance at 117.32. Even if price closes below the bottom of his profile, you've got support down at 111.18. Now, what I don't have here, if I take that back, we do have a buy the D point pattern. That formed with this gap to the upside back on April 26th out there. On a weekly time frame, what do we have? 
We have uh, no topping pattern that's been confirmed yet, and we have prices above profile. So it's lost its momentum, but it's still above a key resistance level at 108.47. That would, of course, be support. And you're consolidating inside of the monthly uh, profile level, 100.24 to 122.99 is support and resistance out there. So what else do we see? Not really a whole heck of a lot of anything else that's worthwhile for me to report on. So I don't recall if you asked any other specific question about that. Just had too many multitasking things going on. But I do hope that that answered your question, Jane, with regard to a review on Oracle. In the case of uh, John in Milwaukee, he wants to take a look at Procter & Gamble. PG is the ticker symbol, so let's pull up its charts, see what it is telling us. And he did ask a question, how does this perform during a stagflationary, stagflationary time period out there? We're not going to find that out in these charts. Let's first take a look at the charts here. And the first place we're going to start is the monthly time frame for Procter & Gamble. So Procter & Gamble is running right into potential resistance. That resistance happens to be its TD9 count top from January of 2022. Now, the volume out there on that monthly time frame was 195 million shares. Last month, we were pulling into it with 154 million shares. So we're inside that swing point with lighter volume. I don't know what's going to happen. Price should test that, that being 165.35. If price can take that out, and if it could take it out with volume, then you'd have a new A to B equals CD, A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, and it would be a big one out there. We can't call that right now, but that's what you would be looking for. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, what do we have here? The weekly time frame chart shows um, a negated TD9 count top. Price is trading above profile today, this week, 163.14. If it closes above that tomorrow, that would be a bullish outcome. Uh, I see an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. That takes us to much higher price. But nonetheless, as opposed to drawing that pattern in there right now, because it really doesn't matter, so to speak, because that monthly is taking on that resistance level, that's what you need to be watching. Even as I look to the daily time frame and I look here for good news, I don't have any kind of news, actually. I've got a wave... CDFG. I've got a wave number seven potential top. Price is trading into a swing point that has volume of 7 million shares. Yesterday you were into it with 7.5. That said, we should go test that high. So that high is likely to be tested. And that's at the 164.32 level out there. So that's what I have when I take a look at Procter & Gamble. Now you asked the question, can we take a look at a stagflationary time period out here? So let's first see, what can I pull up for PG in our seasonal patterns out there? Come on, baby typed it in. I don't know why it's slow. So I am not getting anything for Procter & Gamble. Whoops, not OPG. PG. Hmm. So unfortunately, John, I can't, uh, I can't answer that question from a seasonal standpoint. We'd have to go back to 1966 to 1980-ish uh, type uh, uh, time frame to try to answer that question, and there's no way that I can do that. So my apology that ZZNX does not have the Procter & Gamble historical charts out there, and I can't answer that question for you. But I have answered the question, what's it doing? And that what it's doing is testing that TD9 count swing point high out there. And not until we see how price resolves itself around that can we really try to come up with some other idea of what's being communicated to us. Let's go on to our next request, which was to take a look at Palantir. And this is coming in from SATP. PLTR is a ticker symbol. Right now, it's trading above the top of its profile. That's at 22.34. If it can remain above that, price should likely target 23.20. And 23.20 happens to be the TD9 count breakdown level. If price can clear 23.20 SATP, then you're looking at resistance at around 23.65. I say around because that's the weekly oscillator and change line. If we rally up to 23.20, that number is going to change so I don't know, 2375, something along those lines out there. What we do know about Palantir, it's got stiff resistance up at the 2711 area. 2711 is its monthly TD9 count breakdown level that was tested two months ago, and since then we have pulled back. The weekly time frame chart tells us that price has lost momentum out there. It does have a road momentum indicator top, but um, after we made the low of a couple weeks ago, we made a higher low last week. This week, we're making, and we've made a higher high. So it does look like what Palantir wants to do is move up to that 2320 level. So I hope that helps you out. You also want to take a look at Restoration Hardware. 
RH is the ticker symbol. We take a look at it. I see a TD9 count bottom for its daily time frame. I see price right now trying to take out the top of its profile at 253.13. It's trading into a swing point from back in April 29th. 712,000 shares traded then. We are at 200,000 shares. So it looks like we're coming into that level a little bit lighter. Doesn't matter if you close above 253.13, you're going to at least go tag or should tag its high at 258.10. On a weekly time frame, we're trading below resistance. That would be the bottom of its profile, and that would be a 262.73. If it's only a counter trend move, you could see a rally all the way up to the 283.20 level. That's what I see on Restoration Hardware. We come back from this break. Let's finish off our request by taking a QRVO from Mohammed. See Roads with TFN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the charts here for QRVO, which uh, fell out of bed this morning. And uh, you can see we're trading below the weekly profile, 100.67. We are trading into, there's a potential support area, potential support at 92.50. 92.50 would be the next TD9 count breakout level in the daily time frame. If that area fails, Mohammed, 92.50 that is, then we're likely headed back to the 90.38 to 80.38 level. It's really the monthly time frame chart that is painting the picture 
for what this instrument is doing, which is just in a sideways consolidation between its profiles. And it's been in that sideways consolidation since November of 2022 with inside those profiles out there. So that looks like it's going to continue. Now, it does have a buy zone, and that buy zone is between 80.38 and 90.38 out there. So we've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation between 80.38 and 115.38 or thereabouts. So I hope that helps you out. There's not anything else on the daily or the weekly that's going to assist us with trying to understand what this instrument is doing out there. So I gave you the bad news, so to speak. And the bad news, not, not talking about Muhammad, was everybody else. With regard to the pattern signals that had formed at the end of April on the weekly, uh, the monthly time frame charts that confirm we've got to really be careful out there. Well, what's the potential good news, Stevie? Well, the potential good news is let's switch screens out here. And it's why we really need to pay attention to support and resistance and the patterns out there. And that's really been, as I've gone back and analyzed um, bear markets out there inside the Dow, what I've really come to the conclusion is that these patterns work. Whether it's a TD9 count, Rhodes Mentum Indicator, A to B equals CD pattern out there, wave number seven, they work and help us identify tops and bottoms out here. Well, here's the good news. La four days ago, that's on the trading day of... Um, April the 29th out there, one, two, three, four trading days ago. What the ES Mini did, what the S&P 500 did, what the NASDAQ, I think, did, well, at least the S&P 500 did, was it made a new all-time high priced in yen. Now, what I've got up here, if I've got the ES Mini priced in yen, and you can see I also have its profile levels. And right now, price is pulling back to a key level of support. We've seen one day closes below these profile levels, but nothing more than one day out there. But the whole point of making a new high in the S&P in terms of yen, that is not how major tops get formed. You don't see a top form in yen first and then in the dollar having topped earlier ago. Anyways, folks, have a terrific Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday.